It is full fall over here, guys. Even though we're in Florida and it's a million degrees, you know what? It's still fall in this house, in the Crossing Cottage. So I figured today I would take you along with me as I prepped dinner for a dinner we're having tonight at our house. We're just having some family over, but I have some really good recipes. So I figured I would take you along and show you what I'm making and show you how I'm kind of redecorating the dining room. But I cannot wait to share these with you. They are so simple and serious seriously fall recipe staples. So to get started, I'm just gonna pop some sugar cookies into the oven for dessert. My rule of thumb is if I'm gonna be prepping dinner or having people over, something is gonna be store-bought that just makes my life a little bit easier. So tonight, since I'm making the appetizer and the entree, I figured I would buy the cookies. So that's gonna go in the oven while I clean up the dining room, get everything wiped down, the table set and redecorated in this dining room. Um, to prep for our company. I'm gonna clean this bar off, even though I love how it's styled, it really needs to be wiped down and I'm just gonna try and make it a little bit more functional for actually serving food, what, what a buffet is supposed to do. So um, I'm gonna take everything off and wipe it down. And this is actually our first year having a buffet in our dining room. This is kind of new, so um, it's nice to kind of play around with it and see how I like it styled and see how I can lay food out on here. And we are hosting Thanksgiving and Christmas this year. So I think this buffet is going to come in really handy, um, which I can't believe that next month is November. That's just crazy to me. It feels like I was just decorating for 4th of July and here we are almost mid October, but we're going to be hosting both holidays this year. So I need to figure out the most functional way to use this buffet. Um, um, and just kind of clean it down, rearrange it. I love styling this, it's so fun. So um, let me know down below how you use your buffet. Do you guys actually put food on it or do you just decorate it kind of like how I do here? The storage is great um, for extra plates and stuff, but I need to start util utilizing the top of it. here hi my name is Lindsay I know I have a few new subscribers recently so I thought I would just reintroduce myself again in case you haven't seen any of my previous videos but my name is Lindsay I have two little kids a boy who's almost one year old and a little girl who just turned three so I have my hands full here at home with my kids 
but decorating I just love to do it I love cooking so this is just kind of my outlet for that so if you're new here hi and if you like mom content and decorating then welcome I hope you really enjoy my videos and um, if you haven't subscribed already be sure to do so because there are tons of Christmas and Thanksgiving videos decorate with me cook with me all the good holiday stuff coming up and I don't want you to miss it let me know down below what kind of styles you're drawn towards as far as decorating because I feel like I don't really have a defined style. I'm drawn to pieces that are cozy or like strike up a nostalgic memory for me. Um, I, yeah, I, I guess it's just kind of a gathered style. So if you're like me, let me know down below. I'd love to connect with you. But anyways, tonight, like I said, we're just having a little fall dinner. It's nothing major, but um, my brother-in-law and his wife are coming over and they are about to be missionaries in Guatemala. So we're having them over to just talk about their plans and hear about the place that they're going and um, all that they're gonna do. So we're just so proud of them and so thankful that they're part of our family. And um, we just can't wait to see everything that they're gonna do and the Lord's gonna do down in Guatemala. And um, yeah, we're just so thankful and I love having them over. Um, and what better way to do it than connecting and talking and just having good conversation over food. stuck in the mud let's pack up a life baby and call it a night cause the longer we stay here the harder the fight i said hey the past goodbye I'm longing to live this free life I've been hearing about You will see us howling like wolves in the night Cause nothing is stronger than wanting what you might get I said hey
now that the cookies are done and the table is set, I'm gonna take them out of the oven and put them over here for after dinner so I can just turn and grab them whenever we're done eating. But I'm gonna leave my oven on. It's currently at 350 from the cookies, but I'm gonna crank it up to 400 because for our entree, we are roasting some butternut squash to go in this creamy sausage spinach butternut squash pasta. It is so delicious and it is definitely like a fall recipe staple now for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop up my butternut squash. I peeled this and chopped it up. Um, you're gonna use about two cups, so about half of a butternut squash. Um, I recommend cutting your own, a fresh one, because if you do frozen, um, you're just not gonna get that crispy roast like you would in the oven like you do with these fresh chunks. So I recommend peeling and cutting your own, drizzling them with some olive oil, just add a little salt and pepper, and then you're gonna pop them in the oven for about 30 minutes until they um, are cooked all the way through and they get a little bit crispy. I'm gonna go ahead and cook my sausage now for the pasta. I'm gonna add a little olive oil in my skillet and I'm using a mild Italian sausage. You totally could use hot if you wanted, but my kids are eating this, so I didn't want it to be too spicy. Um, and you could get pre-ground sausage too. I just found these links and I decided to cut the casing. So if you get the links, make sure you cut the casing off of them and then take the meat out. And I just kind of pre-crumbled it, put it in my skillet and I'm gonna brown it um, until it's nice and brown. And then I'm gonna set it to the side because then we're gonna work on boiling our pasta and um, working on the cream sauce that's gonna go in this. It is so super easy. Or like literally almost done and then of course I have my little helper here this is Wilder he's almost one year old he'll be one next month so I cannot believe how fast time flies um, so I always have kids at my feet in the kitchen so I am always extra careful but I'm going to be boiling my pasta and getting that ready I'm gonna get a pitcher of water on the table I like doing a pitcher of water um, as opposed to filling up everyone's glass and bringing it over. This way they can just refill their own drink as needed. To my cast iron, I'm gonna add four cloves of minced garlic and stir that around and then add a bag of spinach um, and then just let that kind of wilt down until I add two cups of milk or you could do heavy cream. The recipe called for heavy cream, but I just use whole milk. Um, and then I'm gonna use a cup of Monterey Jack cheese and a cup of Parmesan cheese. And I'm gonna give that a good stir, let that kind of all mix together and then add my pasta in. And this is when it's gonna start thickening up from the starch from the pasta. I'm gonna add my sausage back in and kind of let that all melt together and thicken up. My pasta is simmering on the stove, so I'm gonna get started on my appetizer because they will be here any minute. And I know they're coming straight from work, so I wanted them to be able to have something to nibble on. I know they're probably so, so hungry, so this will just kind of fill that hunger a little bit and buy me some time if I'm not ready for dinner exactly yet. So I'm just gonna do a block of brie cheese in an oven safe dish and pop it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 15 minutes. And then I am going to be doing a maple pecan glaze on top, which I will show you in just a second. But I'm also gonna cut up some apples and have some crackers on the side to dip in that brie cheese. And it was delicious. Um, you know how you have like all those Pinterest pins for like fall and hosting and Christmas and you just never use them. Well, this gave me the perfect excuse to try this simple appetizer and I will be making it again and again, probably for Thanksgiving. Um, it was so delicious. So I'm gonna cut this up, have that ready to go for when they get here and then I'm gonna jump over and make the maple pecan glaze, which just sent this so over the top. It was the perfect combo. I'm gonna be adding a third cup of chopped pecans, one fourth cup of maple syrup. You probably could do honey too if you didn't have maple syrup, but also a 
teaspoon or tablespoon of cinnamon as well as a fourth a cup of brown sugar and then I'm just gonna kind of stir this all together on the stove and let it melt together it definitely doesn't have to be on there long you just want it enough to where all those ingredients combine and then the brie is coming out of the oven I'm gonna pour this glaze on top and I think they were like walking in the door as this was um, coming out so they were hungry and it just smelled amazing in the house and it was gone in like five minutes it was so good so I definitely recommend this I will link all these recipes down below I found them on Pinterest and um, you definitely have to give them a try All right, we're ready for dinner now. I'm plating this up and then the finishing touch is just adding that butternut squash to the top of this pasta. You could totally mix it in. I just wanted to add it to the top. This way, every time you scooped, you got a big helping of that delicious butternut squash, which is so fall. And I can't wait to make butternut squash soup next week. I might have to do a cook with me for that too, because I have a great recipe. But um, we are gonna go devour this. It was delicious and even better the second day. So leftovers are a two big thumbs up so thank you guys again so much for watching and i hope you're cooking something cozy this october